and the person in charge asked me to came over the next year. That night, I barely slept. In 2019, we had a broad drying comp that was big seller. And at the time, this one was hot on the internet. There were five to six customers were selling this product at the time. Sales kept up around March. And by then, it had been steadily selling for months. Demand and excitement for this product were on the rise. With daily sales hitting somewhere between 300 to 500 units. So we got the idea to shut up of the peak season starting in September, especially in European and American warehouse. The goal was to speed up financial delivery, letting buyers get their hands on the product faster and cutting down both product and shipping costs. This move allowed us to offer our clients lower prices, give them a better perfect margin, so we had about two months for shop based on the sales and shipping cycles at the time. We placed an order with the factory in May to May June. We gave factory around 20 days to fill the order and asked them to deliver in budgets. They said it was no problem and delivery started. Our spot check rates for each batch was about 30%. After checking that there are there was no problem, we start to send them out by different transportation method. It was July, a few days after we shipped everything. We got feedback from our clients. Buyer was reporting that the machine got extremely hot after running for just three to four minutes, forcing them to stop using it to avoid any danger. We checked our purchase record and found the issue was with one of the largest purchases we had ordered. We had ordered extra and sold it in our Chinese warehouse and directed ship it to buyers. Worried the whole batch might be affected, we quickly get in touch with the factory. They initially thought it could be due to some loose wiring causing the temperature sensor to malfunction, a common issue with the electronic products. So we didn't think much of it. However, as seamless feedback kept coming in from the same batch over the next few days, we realized that this wasn't an isolated incident. The crisis came out of the way with 30,000 units still in chance. I called the factory again, and the person in charge asked me to came over the next year. That night, I barely slept. First thing the next morning, we were at the factory. They admitted that some of the heating costs might not be compatible. I was like, did you test the part you bought? They told me they had sold out some of the production to other factories due to the large quantity and used cheaper materials. I was livid. The market was already flooded with very quality of this product, and we had been extra careful choosing this factory. While most factories sold it for around $6, our cost to $11. Now, they've given us a low-quality version for half the order. We couldn't just sell the good half because everything had been rechecked and repacked in our warehouse, making it hard to distinguish the batches. And we didn't want to take the rest. The other batches that made it to Europe and the United States had to be destroyed. We couldn't sell it, turning those $300,000 worth of goods into trash. All our effort and the code we gave our clients were for nothing. The loss wasn't just financial. It was a blow to our credibility and we worried about how it would be affect our clients' operations. Explaining the situation to our clients was tough and sometimes explanation just don't cut it. Thankfully, we didn't release a large quantity into the market, avoiding more significant financial and safety issues. There was also a wake up over us. Why weren't our quality check more rigorous? Why didn't we know more about our product? This incident pushed us to improve not just the interest of our products, but also in managing our supplier changes.